All right, so in this video, we're going to look at an example of a Section C style question for the 2022 AS exam. Now, when we look at this question, I'm going to then show you the answer. And when I show you the answer, I'm going to explain what I've done and why I've done it. After that, at the end, uh, I'm going to explain to you how I would go about that if I was a student doing it in the exam. Part of this video, if you are a very confident programmer, I'll, I'll give you a fair warning. You may find some parts of this a little bit patronizing um, at the least. Uh, but just run with it. You never know in the exam something that may seem really obvious now might not come to your head at that point. Uh, so yeah, just bear with those uh, slightly patronising parts. So here's the question we're working with. As an improvement to this game, you should create a subroutine that will allow the user to select the difficulty mode for the game. The three modes being easy, average and hard. The user will be prompted to enter one of those terms to select the mode. Their choice will manipulate how the puzzle file appears on screen. If the user selects hard, the puzzle will be displayed as normal. If the user selects average, five characters from the solution will be randomly added to the puzzle for the user to solve. If the user selects easy, 15 characters from the solution will be randomly added to the puzzle for the user to solve. Let's now have a look at my solution. Uh, I'll be honest, after reading this again, I have just realized I, in my solution, use the term medium and not average. If it's ever come up in an exam, ensure you definitely use the right words because you would lose a mark for that. All right, let's now have a look at what and why I've done with the solution. All right, so here's the code that's been slightly adjusted to answer the question. Immediately, you should hopefully see this is a new subroutine I've added, uh, difficulty mode. Um, so that's what the question is asking for. The question didn't specify the name of the, the, sorry, the name of the subroutine, and that's okay. So the first thing we're doing is we're actually gonna need to use the puzzle grid puzzle answer and solution arrays. Um, so we're using reset data structures in order to get hold of those arrays and then load puzzle, which um, is gonna be used to actually fill in these arrays, okay? Up next, we ask the, the obvious question, choose the difficulty, easy, medium or hard, and then here we uh, allow the user to enter um, a mode and that gets stored into difficulty, which is a variable. Then we use some selection uh, which will apply an integer value into a variable called mode. Okay, this comes from the exam question where it says if they pick easy, we're going to have 15 numbers. If they pick medium, we're going to have five extra numbers. And if they pick hard, um, they're going to have no extra numbers, it's going to stay as it is. Um, there's other ways of doing this, I just chose to do it this way, it's the easiest way to do it. Up next, we've got a number of numbers. This is a variable that's being used um, later down the program, actually up next really, to count how many new numbers we are adding. Okay, And then our while loop here has the condition of while number of numbers is less than mode. So while number of numbers, so number of numbers is the number of numbers that we have added. Mode is the total amount of numbers we want to add. Okay, so as soon as this value is no longer less than this value, that means we have added the suitable number over here. So what exactly is happening in this while loop? The first thing here is we are selecting the row we're going to add to. Now it needs to be completely random. So we're randomizing the row and then we're going to randomize the column. So here we've got random row, then we're using the random module. This is, the random module is already called at the start of the code by the exam board. So it's good to make use of it. 
Okay, and round range, so someone who's one to nine, there are nine uh, rows, so it brings it random there. Now here, I'm doing print random row. Um, that's what I'm doing. In terms of why I'm doing this, this is completely not needed in terms of the question. It's not needed at all. The reason I'm doing that is more for my own uh, sake, just to help me with testing my code out to make sure I know what's happening at each stage. This is a skill that you will see quite a bit in this program. I use it quite often in this while loop. So yeah, this is just a, just a way of testing so I know when it comes to the exam, I will do that, but then I will just, I would remove that from the actual answer after. Uh, so we've got our row and we've got a random column, which uh, has been spelled in a very interesting way. I don't know why I did that, but that's all right. So again, we pick the column within that row. And of course, when we have a random row and random column, we have our position. Okay, and it's been completely chosen at random. Now here, we've got if puzzle grid, and these are the coordinates within puzzle grid. Okay, puzzle grid, of course, um, contains the, uh, the values that the uh, user will be playing with. Um, <clears throat> All right, so what's happened here, just to give you an idea of what's going on. Um, puzzle grid is what the user will see uh, when they play the game. Solution is a grid that contains all the numbers, so it's a puzzle that's completely filled up. Okay, so what we're doing is we're checking to see if the cell that's been randomly chosen from puzzle grid, if the value in there is exactly the same as the position, the same position in solution. Okay, if it's not, that should mean that the value in this position in Puzzle Grid is empty. Okay, in which case we want to fill that position with the number from the same position in solution. Okay, so if they're not the same, then we're going to, of course, take what is in the same position in solution and place it into puzzle grid in the exact same place okay of course if they are the same that means that um there is a number showing in that particular position in puzzle grid okay so if it is um of course the main line here is what we need which is taking us in the solution position and putting it into the puzzle grid position then we've got this line here. Now, this is another line that's been done for testing. So in terms of this is what I've done and why I've done it, um, this is just for testing purposes. So I know that um, the the value in solution, so it tells me the actual number that's coming from that position, and then it's telling me which row it's going in. I could probably say the row and the column if I went to. Um, I was just doing this because it made sense to me. Of course, in the actual exam, that's not needed. You could remove it. It's just there to test, just to make it easy to follow. Uh, this is very helpful because when you run the program, you want to make sure that, if, say, let's say they pick easy, you want 15 changes to have been made, okay? Well, the easiest way you can tell, and there's other ways of testing, but the easiest way for me is I can count how many times a line like that is outputted uh, when I run the program. Because if it appears 15 times, that means 15 numbers have actually been outputted. So 15 numbers have actually been placed into the, the grid, okay? So, um, next we do number of numbers equals number of numbers plus one. This is not testing, this is an important line. This actually allows us to, to exit the while loop. So yeah, it's, uh, it's fine. That's just gonna add one to number of numbers, of course, when number of numbers becomes the same as mode, the while loop ends. Okay, now I put here else no change. Um, else no change, this line is totally unnecessary. This was again just done for testing purposes. Um, I placed this just to kind of see again what was going on, just to make sure was something happening, was something not happening. Um, that's what that purpose was for. No change could appear any number of times. You just never know what gets picked at random, right? So again, not needed at all. You don't even need an else in this one, but I just put it there just for testing purposes in the real thing, I wouldn't do that. Now we return puzzle grid. Reason why is because puzzle grid 
has now been updated with all the values so we can now return it to whatever subroutine has called this subroutine okay okay so the final part here now um i've chosen to uh call the difficulty mode subroutine from solve puzzle the reason for this is um when you want to run the program before it displays the puzzle grid over here we're going to change what's in the puzzle grid by applying the difficulty mode and that's all that would do this is going to call difficulty mode and it's going to return the value into puzzle grid that's what i've done and that's why i've done those things let's now take a look at how when it comes to how there are several techniques you may consider the first technique is to isolate your own code uh, in my solution i create a new python file and try to create my solution from there so as you can see here we've got a new python file here Anytime I want to use a subroutine, I would copy and paste the code from the original skeleton code into here. This time though, not using it as a subroutine, although you may want to if you want to do that, you can. Um, so you can see here is an example where I've got a reset data structure subroutine. I'm not actually using the subroutine, I'm just taking the code from there. Um, the reason I don't use Subroutines is just to kind of, for now, just allow me to just play around with the code without having to worry about calling any subroutines at this point. That's why I did that. But if you're happy to call them whenever you need, no problem, you can do that as well. Okay, so for this particular solution, my intention was to have access to the grid that the user will see when they want to solve the puzzle. Now, to get this grid, I noticed that in the skeleton code, reset data structure was used every time when we need to get access to this grid so that's why i took the reset data structure um, code i also used commenting to remind me of what these subroutines were then i knew i had um to fill the arrays created by reset data structure as of course this subroutine creates empty arrays and to fill them i used load puzzle file as this is what the program has used to fill the arrays and here's load puzzle file right here. What you don't see is that after I did this, I um, actually took the uh, the subroutine or the code from a subroutine which displays all of this into a grid, so the solve puzzle, so display grid and solve puzzle, etc. Um, just to check that everything was correct. And I was working with the actual puzzle file um, and it would display how it is displayed. Okay, I then removed this as I didn't need it at this stage. And this all set me up to then produce this code here, which you've pretty much seen earlier. Now I've added uh, lines like this, as I've mentioned before, just to help me test my code to make sure it was doing the right things. This was explained earlier, so I'll go back if you're not sure. Once I had this working, it was time to place all of this code into the skeleton code. Um, now, what some students sometimes do is actually just take the whole thing as it is and put it over. Um, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make it a more cleaner. I wanted to actually call the subroutines. So I just took the actual code that I created myself. So this one over here, it's now me in the, uh, the, the actual file. Uh, this skeleton code file, um, and then I placed it into this skeleton code. Um, of course, now calling it difficulty mode. I then had to call the subroutines I was using in my uh, new file. Now, if you are ever stuck with how to call the subroutines appropriately. Just remember that the skeleton code is already calling those subroutines elsewhere. So you can always just uh, do a quick search. So for example, for example, reset data structures, and then you can just look and see when it gets called 
you can see here load puzzle uses it like this so you can just take that and you can use it like that just in case you're not sure how to um, how to how to use it for whatever reason finally i need to call my new subroutine i decided um to call it in solve puzzle uh, which you can see just here you only you only just because you would only need uh to use my new subroutine just as you're about to play the game now this is just one way of approaching the question there are many other strategies you could use you could choose to just type straight into skeleton code which is fine i would recommend if you did do that duplicate skeleton code so you don't um ruin any of that code and that's pretty much everything you need to know about how to tackle these questions